The title of today's devotional is Confronting Your Enemies. Now, our scripture reading is Nehemiah chapter 6 and chapter 7. Now, in our study of the book of Nehemiah, we have observed many qualities in his life that really should inspire believers everywhere. Uh, For instance, as we look at chapter 1, we found he was a man of humility and a man of prayer. When we come to Nehemiah chapter 2, we see him as a man who was passionate about his work on the walls and would not be deterred by the criticism or the scorn of his enemies. In Nehemiah chapter 3, we saw that he was a skilled administrator. And then in chapter 4, he was a man that was bold and courageous in his faith. Where others enriched themselves in Nehemiah chapter 5, we found that Nehemiah sacrificed and carried more than his share of the burdens. And lastly, and most importantly, we have seen throughout that he was a man who feared and revered God. Now notice with me then in Nehemiah chapter 6, a chapter I'm titling, A Model Shepherd. Now, familiar enemies appear once again in Nehemiah chapter 6, and I invite you to open your Bible and follow and and consider those as we find them in chapter 6 and verse 1. Now, I'm struck as I read Nehemiah 6 that uh, there are really many spiritual qualities in Nehemiah's life. But particularly in Nehemiah chapter 6, we see three qualities of spiritual leadership that were evidence in Nehemiah's response to his critics, to his enemies. The first in chapter 6 and verse 1 is that he was honest. Now, his enemies were dishonest. Uh, Sabalot and Tobiah and, and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of the enemies heard that they had built the wall and that there was no breach. And yet in chapter 6 and verse 1, Nehemiah says, At that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. Now, that would seem to be a small matter. On one hand, his enemies are saying, he's built the wall and there's no breach. But on the other, Nehemiah set the record straight and confessed that he had indeed not entirely finished the work on the wall, for the gates were not where they should have been. Now, you would say, well, that's a minor issue. And perhaps it is, but it was an honest admission you know, I find as I as I follow Nehemiah's life, he's a man of integrity and not a man given to little white lies or exaggerations. He did not misrepresent the work and he spoke the truth. Now, a second quality of Nehemiah's leadership is found in verses 2 and 3. And I would suggest that it is that he was an uncompromising leader, unwavering in his priorities. Now, when his enemies proposed he meet with them in the plain of Ono, he refused, for he discerned they would do him harm in verse 2. And so he sent his messengers unto them, that is, his, uh, unto his enemies, saying, I'm doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Uncompromised, unwavering priorities. Now, the third quality I would suggest is found in verses 4 through 9, for we find that Nehemiah was also an insightful, discerning man. Here we have where the enemy had written a libelous letter against Nehemiah, in effect, accusing him of plotting an insurrection against King Artaxerxes, the king of Persia. Four times his enemies appealed to him to meet with them. And on the fifth time, they attacked him in an open letter that was filled with lies in verse 5. Well, how did Nehemiah respond? He boldly replied to their lies in verse 8. He prayed for strength, saying in verse 9, O God, strengthen my hands. And yet, the enemy wasn't finished. For when the open letter failed to discourage Nehemiah, they, the enemies, bribed a priest who tempted him to cower and hide in the temple, that which would have been forbidden under the law, and to seek shelter there. Well, once again, in verses 11 through 14, Nehemiah saw through the evil motives of his enemy, and he answered their attack with spiritual discernment 
and conviction. You know, as you consider this, in spite of all the opposition, the temptation to be discouraged, we find in verse 15 of Nehemiah 6 that the wall was finished in 50 and 2 days. 52 days. Now think about that. The walls of the city of Jerusalem had been in disrepair for 150 years, but one man made the difference. And he led the rebuilding in 52 days. In fact, verse 16, we read that even the enemies perceived this was the work wrought of God. Now, the concluding verses of Nehemiah 6 give a tragic insight into the character of some of the nobles of Judah, those that surely would have been supporting Nehemiah and in support of securing the wall. And yet, Nehemiah, we find, who modeled selfless leadership, had to face influential Jews in Judah who conspired with the enemy. They actually had sent many letters, we read, unto Tobiah. Who was Tobiah? He was the enemy of Nehemiah and was opposed to the work. He was a heathen. And yet here we have the nobles of Judah conspiring with this enemy. In effect, they were supporting those who were against their own countrymen. Now, we don't know what the motive of the nobles was. It's not stated. But we can certainly induce that they wanted to enrich themselves. Uh, Perhaps they wanted to continue their trade with the heathen. Even at the sacrifice of their own people sounds an awful lot like the world that we live in today. And though Tobiah had proven to be a formidable enemy of of Nehemiah, the nobles touted his good deeds, the good deeds of his enemy, And no doubt they distorted the works and the words of Nehemiah. Once again, Nehemiah was honest, uncompromised, and discerning. I close with a thought. Imagine how different our families and churches would be if there were more Nehemiahs in this generation. Here's a question for you. Will you face the enemy of God and his people and determine to be honest, uncompromised, and spiritually discerning. Thank you for joining me today.